Just a quick announcement before today's show that November is Investor Month. For the entire month of November, we will be featuring 12 cannabis investors. So if you're a cannabis company that's raising capital or an accredited investor that's looking for a firm to manage your cannabis investments, make sure to listen to Raising Cannabis Capital in November and get ready for 12 cannabis investor episodes. From MJ Bulls Media, I'm Dan Humiston, and this is Cannabis Crowdfunding. Today on Cannabis Crowdfunding, we are joined by David Schachter, CEO and co-founder of Cannabis Scope, and Brett Andrews from MicroVentures. David and Brett, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, Dan. Happy to be back. For our Raising Cannabis Capital listeners, you will remember Brett. He's been on the show a couple times. His company, MicroVentures, is one of the first crowdfunding platforms to allow cannabis campaigns. And David was also a guest on the show last winter with his company, Cannabis Scope. David, I said when you were on the show in February that you were a company to watch, and looks like you've proven me right. Six months later, and you're in the midst of a crowdfunding campaign. Before we jump into the crowdfunding campaign, for the people that did not have the opportunity to listen to your show, David, can you tell the listeners about your company? Sure. Cannabis Scope started off as an information system, as a guide to help people find the right product and really broke down flower, terpenes, cannabinoids, and what. Getting away from sativa indica, that's not helpful for people when they're trying to find strains and the strain names are such a problem. So we have this index of a wheel. That was a tool. Doctors, educators used it for consulting. And then the companies evolved to be an e-commerce data insight play. Mm -hmm. To give an an idea on how the wheel works, if you're looking for maybe like a calming effect or maybe because you're suffering from an an injury and you like this type of flavor and and you turn the wheels and it finds the product at the dispensary based on their inventory that matches what you're looking for. Yeah, it's the front end menu. So we connect with point of sale systems and we have a list view and a photo grid view describing products. And then we also use this cool interactive wheel, which you click through and find the product that's really best suited for you. Because when you look at the photos and the names, they're not always so helpful. And if we can categorize it properly and label it, especially with the lab results per batch, you can really show what's in it and what are you putting in your body. I think last time when we spoke, it was like thousands of different strains. I I don't remember exactly the total number, but it was incomprehensible how many combinations there could be. Yeah, think of it as somewhat, you know, wine, liquor, beer, whiskey. They're coming out with new batches, their blends, but you still have to show your lab reports, how much THC, how much CBD is in them. The name game is not going away. This is just a way to help the brands as well as the retailers really narrow down what products can help. And then for the consumers, it's overwhelming knowing that there's thousands of strains out there and and what's available for you, what's near you, what's going to help you. If we can narrow this down and make your selection easier and give you a little more confidence. Yeah, it can't get much easier than than looking at your wheel. And it's again, go to the website and you can really get a better feel for it. Well, Brett, MicroVentures is very selective. I mean, you just don't let anybody on your platform. I mean, I know, I know you get tons of companies applying. You recently got into cannabis, but what did you like about David's company that made you decide to, to put them on your platform? Yeah, so as you know, Dan, having been on a couple of times and talked with you in past conversations, MicroVentures has been very actively looking at companies in the, what I would call, cannabis tech space. And I think when I met David and learned what he was working on, I think that key insight that you guys sort of touched on a second ago that was really interesting to us was the cannabis space, first of all, it's fairly new in terms of operating on a legal level. And a lot of the suppliers and growers have gotten very sophisticated with the different types of strands. And so there's been a lot of obvious 
sophistication from the consumer standpoint on trying to find what is going to work for them and is going to solve whatever the need they're looking to solve. And so I think the idea of starting with intent. So a consumer says, I've got a ailment or I've got something I'm trying to solve. Cannabis is, is going to be the solution, but which strain do I go for? The wheel that they've created, a cannabis scope, I think is a, a really great tool to solve that. It's a very slick user interface. And we believe that most consumer facing software these days has to be very user friendly in order to be effective. And then lastly, you found a way to build a business on top of that. So it's not just a cool functioning tool. It's, it's a tool for them to find a way to monetize with their B2B relationships. And so for all of those reasons, it really lined up with our overall thesis in the cannabis space. And I know you put a high emphasis on the management team. And just having worked with him in the past, I, I know they have a very strong management team over there. Yeah, I mean, he's been in the he's been working in the industry for a while, and the team that he's brought together, I think, has a lot of experience within this industry. They've got a lot of different connections, and I think the traction that they've gotten so far is, is supports that. Yeah, for sure. Well, David, you're kind of a, the combination of cannabis and big data, which both have enormous potentials. So, look down the road. Where do you see the company evolving? So it, it started with education. And then it went to customization where every brand wanted their own wheel and then for retailers to use it as a front end menu. So first we're going to get into the e-commerce and that'll be for CBD retailers, which is nationwide. Second stage will be with point of sale systems and API integrations. And that's for the THC side. And then the whole time we're collecting consumer data because not only do we have point of sale and we know somewhat what's in the market on prices, on quality, quantity, but also with consumer, I guess, buyer intent. It's not what they bought. It's what were they wanting to buy? You know, what are they really ordering? So the data insights, that's the key is knowing what consumers are really looking for. And that's helpful for brands and retailers. Shopping online has become the trend with everything. You know, millennials buy 60% online when it's a growing market of becoming more common. And as the dispensaries and legal systems start introducing distribution, everything's prepackaged. So even when you're at the store, you still don't really get to look at it and see it. And, and this is a way to put all that information that it should be transparent. You're getting third party testing for a reason. People are branding in a way of showing what's in it. This is a digital version that can really reach a lot more people. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see that. It's like you touch not just the wholesale market, but you really make it convenient for the B2C. I want to take a quick break to thank you for listening to today's show. As the leading cannabis podcast network, we're constantly adding new cannabis podcasts to support our industry's growth. And that's why we're so excited to announce our newest podcast, The Cannabis Breakout which premieres October 18th. The show is about the thousands of Americans who remain in prison for violating cannabis laws that have long since been overturned. The Cannabis Breakout gives cannabis political prisoners a voice. If you're a former cannabis prisoner or have a loved one who is a cannabis prisoner, we want to share your story. Please go to mjbulls.com and sign up to be a guest. I'm going to jump forward, David, and we want to talk more about crowdfunding because that's what we're here to talk about today. And Brett, can you give us an overview of investing in crowdfunding campaign and how much someone can invest? What's the minimum investment? Do you get equity? How's it work? Yeah, sure. So the equity crowdfunding, the rules around it, it was a result of the Jobs Act, which passed in 2012. And then around 2016, the uh, SEC issued the rules around what we call Reg CF, standing for Regulation CF. It's the exemption that allows both accredited and non-accredited investors to invest in private companies. Prior to this, no non-accredited, unless they're your friends or family, can invest in a private startup company. So when the rules came out, it allowed platforms like ours to facilitate fundraising and actually allow companies to raise equity and or debt financing from the crowd. So again, not just accredited investors. So this is unlike Kickstarter or GoFundMe where you're making donations or you're doing pre-sales. This is actual securities that the investor is purchasing. On our site, we allow minimal investment per investor of $100. And we go up from there. And yeah, I mean, I think as far as the cannabis industry is concerned, we see it as a big opportunity, the pairing for, with crowdfunding, because there's not a lot of public company options. 
the average retail investor is looking to get exposure into this space. And there's not too many companies that out there that are actually listed on the public markets. And so having some private companies have access to, I think, is really important. And then on the other side, I think there's a lot of cannabis companies that are boxed out from more traditional investors. And so uh, using a platform like ours really allows the community to be put its support behind companies they believe in. Yeah, especially when you can do it as for as little as $100. I mean, to buy a piece of David's company for $100, why wouldn't you do it? <laughs> but David, with all the money being invested in the industry, and I'm sure you've had people approach you about investing in your company. What made you decide to go the crowdfunding route versus working with like a venture fund or an angel investor? I heard your podcast and heard about micro ventures and not afraid to pick up the phone and call and applied and Brett got back to me and it's kind of the beauty of it from what I understood was the the terms and everything that came with the due diligence that I had a business plan, we had interest, there's traction and by partnering essentially with micro ventures, putting us through this boot camp of getting everything ready for the fun. It was something that angels wanted to see, VCs will want next round. But this stage to reach out to the community, like people use the wheel on their own website. So as our partners, they can join us in this grassroots community that only a crowdfund really offers where that people can come in for minimal investment and be a part of us as oh, we have hundreds of brand ambassadors now because you believed in us. Yeah, there's nothing like having all those people behind you and you know, rooting for your success. And I always look at it as it's a great way to do a friends and family round. You know, a lot of friends mm -hmm. would be like, man, I wish I wish I knew. And the beauty of that is that you do this through micro ventures. You know, all the shares, everything's done according to their term sheet. And it just set real standard for us. And we can come back to our friends and family and partners and say, look, we've been accepted by VC backed equity crowdfunding. That was a huge game changer when we were accepted. And Thank you to Micro Ventures and really Dan to you on I'm an avid listener of the show and I follow it and I will call the people who I think are can help or that I can help and it's been a great match so far I and mean, we're doing really well just on that. We're certainly glad to, <laughs> to help. It's been a lot of fun watching your company grow, David. That is for sure. And and like I said, we're right in the middle of your campaign right now and this is an exciting time. Well, we're gonna wrap this up, but we've been speaking with David Schechter the CEO and co-founder of Cannabis Scope, and Brad Andrews from MicroVentures. And I have Cannabis Scope crowdfunding campaign is live. And if you want to learn more about this opportunity, you can go to microventures.com forward slash crowdfunding forward slash Cannabis Scope. So yeah, I mean, gee whiz, for a hundred bucks, why wouldn't you do it? You know, this could be Google. Who knows? Brett, it's always great to have you on the show. And David, Congratulations. I mean, you deserve this. Keep it going, man. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dan. It's always great to re be a part of the show and keep up the great work. You put out some great content there. Well, thanks, guys. And I'm going to, after we hang up, I'm going to get my piece of your company before, it, before the campaign ends. <laughs> Have a great night, guys. <laughs>